Okay, and so um, welcome to the module, and um, which is CST forty sixty, and um, it's called visual data analysis. And today we will not cover any technical details, and we're going to just go through a more in depth overview of what the module will cover, what is the assessment, like coursework will be like. And if you have been to the induction, you have a general idea what the module covers. And today we're going to talk about those in more detail. Okay, and start with the teaching team. And so that's me, Kai Xu. Uh, the surname is a bit difficult to pronounce. And uh, so, I mean, it's not directly and re relevant to you. But you just be aware this module is also taught in the overseas campuses. So sometimes you will see, okay, something mentioned UK. That means these are for the UK students. And most of the things will be applied to UK students. And I put it there just for the overseas students. And when they say, see this, they will know, okay, this is for relevant, not for their local campuses. And so I, I will cover most of the module, actually three quarters. And we will also have Xiao Hong, and uh, he will cut part about six weeks on image analysis. So we will talk a bit more about what image analysis part can and consists of a little bit, a little bit later. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned, this also delivers in overseas campuses in Dubai, it's done by ATIF, which is maybe not directly relevant to you here. And so next is the teaching plan. and. Uh, so for the first term, or maybe the first half of the module, week one to week 12, uh, we're gonna talk about data validation. So I will cover those parts. And then from week 13 to week 18, and Xiao Hong, that's how you pronounce her name, and we'll cover image analysis. And then in the last six weeks, uh, we will cover visual analytics workflow. And so it most likely will be me, unless we find someone else to cover that part. So that's the kind of rough plan. Okay. Uh, okay. And in terms of lectures and labs, and so I should have updated this. This is um, from last year and obviously no longer true, but and all the lectures are online, just as we are doing now. And half of the labs will be in person, and then half of the labs will be online. So like today, we're gonna to have a in-person lab. So this is alter alternates. So for the odd weeks, week one, three, five, we'll have in-person labs, and in two, four, six, eight, et cetera, where we have online labs. Okay, and... Uh, I will use Zoom and for both the lectures and the labs. And the Zoom link is always the same. So it's the same link. And so we'll use the same link for everything related to this module. And there's a link and most of you should have now, otherwise you will not be here. And uh, so other lecturers may choose to use different things. They may use Zoom as well, but probably with a different link. They may have different links for lectures or labs or different sessions. So that may vary. <clears throat> um, the next part is say, uh, as you noticed, um, this module is slightly different from the others in the sense the lecture is one and a half hours. And then we will cut. So that's a little bit longer than the other modules. And many modules will be in one hour. Again, this varies, I think, for two of the modules, they combine the lecture and lab. So they have a one session for three hours. I think another module is one hour lecture, two hours labs. And here is one and a half for both the lectures and labs. So in total, every, and the learning time, and with me, every week will be three hours. That's the same. It's just split, but slightly different split between the lecture and lab. Okay, and in the lecture, we're going to cover both the theory related to visual data analysis, data analysis and the practical skills in a sense, and what is the latest tools, how do you use, how do you use them to do visual data analysis or data visualization. 
Okay, and then during the lecture, so we will have some slides which is similar to what we are doing now, and we also have some more live visualization sessions. So this is usually the more practical side of the module. So I'm going to show you how to use certain tools, what it looks like, how to use different features, how that map to uh, the different functions, uh, different concepts we covered in the more theoretical part. So that will be a more live session. Okay. Uh, okay. Ah, and I think I mentioned this already. And the lecture will be recorded and will be made available online afterwards. And actually, if you go to the module page now, you will see the recordings from last year. Uh, yeah. So let me change to the student view. Um, so, yeah. Okay, and so this is the module page and what will look like to you. Uh, and uh, so these are organized week by week and we are in week one. Uh, actually, I didn't put a link there for the recording last year. Maybe I didn't recording the first session. And But for week two, you can see there's already an, a link to the recording. And so these are the recording from last year. And it will be quite similar um, to this year's. And so if, if you're interested, you can and go and have a look now. But once we had... Once we have the new recording from the lecture this year, I will replace these links. So you will see the latest version there. Okay. Back. Yep. Okay. And as I said before, the lab is also one and a half hours, and that makes total learning week. Total learning every week is three hours. Okay, and uh, then in the first 12 weeks, and we're going to have quite a bit of group exercise. So you are given some tasks to complete in the lab, and these are completing in groups. And the actual coursework, the majority of the marks of the module actually go to individual work. So the group work is to encourage you to learn together, talk to each other, and help you to learn. Okay. And then some of these will be marked. Again, we'll cover this in more detail and in the and very soon. Okay. And then the lab will not be recorded and either the in-person or the online version. And that's mostly just because of the GDPR data protection, data protection reasons. Okay. And then in terms of the textbook. Um, for each module, we have to pick one main textbook. And uh, so for this module, we pick this book called the uh, Visualization Analysis and Design, and which you should see from the module reading list. And uh, each module would have a reading list. So that's a direct link to the reading list. We could click and go there. And you can see these ones again. So the view you see will be slightly different because currently I'm logged in to recognize I'm have I can edit the list so the interface will have these options there. And but this is the main textbook. And so you can see it's available online as a digital book. And so that's the preferred way by the university now and for every pro to provide the book as a digital copy rather than to get a copy and from the library. And if you want to, it's still possible. It says in the library, there are three copies, physical copies available if you really want. And also, I just want to show you very quickly. Um, so you should see the reading list on your module page as well. So you'll see something like this. It says, Go to the module page. For me, it's on the right-hand side. 
we have this reading list box and that's the link and which goes to exactly the same page as we saw before. Okay, and obviously we have the readings and this is the main one. We have a couple of there as well. And then these are the recommended readings, so which are useful. And, but it's not the, as list here as essential, but I would say they are quite important. And these ones, the first two are more practical and kind of user guide. So this one teaches how you use Tableau and this one how to use an Altair, which are the two softwares we're gonna cover in the module. And this is more for research. If you want to learn more about data visualization, what it is the very latest um, development in this field, that is a good place to look at. Okay, and already mentioned this, you can access the link to the reading list from your module page. Okay, and many of these books where we have e version available, as I mentioned, and this is preferred way for the university to deliver books now. So, and maybe you are very familiar or used to this already. For me, it's still a little bit change as I grown up reading physical books. Okay, and then a little bit more in details about what we covered in each section. And if you remember, we mentioned before there are three sections. The first section is data validation, which is mentioned here. The second part is the image analysis, and the third part is the visual analytics workflow. Okay, and uh, say the data validation part, which is the first term or first 12 weeks, we start with introduction to data validation, which we'll do next week. And we're talking about different types and different tasks. And so the most important thing you do in visual data analysis is to, to make sure and the validation you created or designed match the type of data you want to analyze and also the task you need to find answer for or to complete. And depends on different dates and different tasks, you will come up with different um, designs. Okay, and then we'll talk about markers and channels. And these are mostly talking about how do you map different data attributes to different visual elements. For example, you have numbers, you have categorical values from, a let's say you have a data set, you probably have a, say like a spreadsheet. You have many columns, how do you present each of the columns visually? And so the user can make it easier to find any patterns in the data. And we will talk about some visual encoding principles. And so say, we one of the ways to make the validation effective is to design to follow the way how we see things so we as human involved over the years um, to kind of adapt to survive and which leads to certain ways we are good at looking at for example and some pop-out effects which means if something different from the rest and it will be easily very quickly spotted by us and we want to take advantage of those when we design the validation Okay, and then um, most of the time we talk about, say, that different types of data, and then most of the time we will focus on what's so called the tabular data. And essentially, these are just a spreadsheet or CSV files. Those are probably the most common ones you will encounter in your work or study. So, we're going to first spend most of the time talking about tabular data in the first 12 weeks. And we'll talk about different techniques you can use to visualize different tabular data. And we'll talk a little bit about the interaction as well, in the sense, say, and the visualization, for example, you can create in a spreadsheet, and this Excel spreadsheet is usually static. It does not change or move, and the user cannot interact with it. And what we will be covering will be and support interaction as well, which is a very important part of visualization. Okay. And we also talk a little bit about and multiple views as well. And so, this is the case when you have multiple charts in a single view. So this is sometimes people call it dashboard. So you have multiple views. We'll see more examples of this very soon. Okay, now we're coming back to um, the main idea of data validation. Um, the 
kind of if you try to summarize data validation in one sentence, which is usually oversimplified, is to use human cognition to for pattern discovery. So this is this is different from say a machine learning algorithms, which is mostly using computational power for pattern discovery, whereas data validation is using human cognition. So more or less use our blood and so our cognition system, which is use say the eyes and the brains connect brain part responsible for that and the rest as use it as a huge computer to discover things from the data. And okay, and so this is one of the examples I often use to demonstrate this. And so did anyone see this before the picture? And so you can, I think you have a reaction button which you can choose your hands up or down. I can't find it now. Okay, and so I assume, where is my reaction button? Okay, oops, sorry, let me go back. Okay, as you probably can see, and so I have this logo here, it says Facebook. And if you have very good eyesight, and you can see when that was produced, it's actually quite, it's a while ago now, it says 2010. And so what is showing here is the friendship on the Facebook. And so each dot is a person or user of Facebook. And these are dots are very small, so you more or less can't see it. All you really see is just to say an area which is upright. So that's just because there's so many users there and they just light up the entire area. And then two users are connected if they are friends on Facebook. And obviously there's lots of connections. For example, UK is here. I'm sure there's lots of, and people in UK, they are friends to each other and which you can't really see the connections. And what you can see then is this kind of lines, which says, okay, these are the connections of friends who one and one of the friend is in the Europe or in the UK and the other friend is in the US. Yeah, that's all it is. And so th this does two things. And the first thing is, it tells you the things you expect might exist in the data. And for example, you might expect, and for say Facebook is probably more popular in the US and in the Europe, which is, you can easily confirm that is the case because you can see and mostly the dates, the air, most part of say the US is lighting up and so is the Europe. So that confirms there's lots of users or these are the more popular areas where Facebook is used. So again, so you need to remember, and so this data is from 2010, so that's and 10 years ago. And if you do the same realization now, it probably will be quite different. And also, and, The other thing which you can see is almost you can see the shapes or the outlines of different continents. So this is more obvious and in the US, you can almost clearly see and um, the say the coastal line and the boundary of the land mass and even say probably where all the major cities are because these were shown as bright spots and then similar for the Europe because there are so many users. So you need to remember, and in this validation, there's no map. All it plot, or all, all it and visualize are users, and each user has a location indicating where they are. And because there are so many users, you can actually starting to see the shapes of different continents. That's again kind of expected. And you can see, for example, in the South America, again you can roughly see the shape of the continent, and you can clearly see where these Facebook is popular. So most of the coastal areas and somewhere here, I think that's Brazil and much less in Africa. Okay. 
Okay, and then this comes to, again, this is kind of expected. You would imagine, say, maybe in Africa and the South Africa, at in, say, more than 10 years ago, it's less prevalent in terms of internet, so less Facebook users. Okay, and but did you spot anything odd in this violation? Anyone? Something which is slightly unexpected. No. And you can either um, raise your hand or just unmute yourself. Okay. Okay. And so just because of the time, and I want to show you. So actually you can see here, this part. <laughs> and uh, so people with like a very basic knowledge about what map you will know, this part actually should have a huge land mass here, but it's completely missing from this particular area. China is missing. Yeah. So actually what missing here and is actually Russian and mostly Russian and China. So because the Facebook is and not it's banned. I know it's banned in face and in China and also maybe not popular or maybe semi-banned in, in Russia. And so these two, so they are completely missing and from the violation. Okay. And then so this is kind of a thing which we as users or as a human, and just based on the common sense, can quite easily pick from pick up from the data. And it will be quite difficult for any algorithms to pick up. And partly because, and this is not because something in the data, but because something missing from the data, which should be there by common sense. And that's quite different, uh, quite difficult for the algorithm because there are so many possible things can be missing from the data set. And to test every single one of them will be not practical. Whereas use data validation is much easier to pick or use human common knowledge or common sense. It's quite straightforward, simple thing. Okay, and then I'm gonna now talk a little bit about different software we're gonna use. Uh, the first part, so we're gonna cover two software and in the data validation part, which is 12 weeks. And the first is about Tableau. And so that's one of the interface of the Tableau could look different. So Tableau is a desktop and validation software. In the sense, it's closer to say Microsoft Word or Excel spreadsheet more than say a programming language like Python. And so you can create different validations as some examples shown here by just point and click. So mostly you need to just select some functions from the menus or from the uh, right click buttons. And you, sometimes you have to set some settings as well, but you don't really need to write any complex code. Okay, and it certainly can create much more advanced validations than what Excel can. Excel can do quite a few different types of validation already, the basic ones, and you can have more, much more complex ones and in Tableau. And also it supports interactive validation, so the user can interact and the simple one is mouse over, but you can do more complex ones. For example, user can visually filtering what data to be displayed in the validation, which is not possible in say Excel. Okay, and you can also create dashboard or stories. So we already briefly mentioned the dashboard. It's a view continue, can, consists of multiple validations. You can have a, Hopefully there'll be some examples later on. You have a visualization which have multiple charts and some displays or numbers as well. And that's the dashboard. And the stories means you can have a narrative or almost like a story created by a series of visualizations. You start with the first visualizations which tells the first part of the stories or narrative. And then it goes on to the second one and you might have a few of these and in the entire narrative of stories, okay? And so these are also very useful and also to tell uh, sometimes a more complex 
an insight from data which you cannot show just from one single visualization. Okay, and uh, finally, and the Tableau is used as a very popular tool and used by many companies and organizations, including Middlesex University as well. We use Tableau to analyze the data the university has. So you'll find quite a few jobs which require Tableau skills. Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, and so it has been a very popular and company, as I think the went and they they floated on stock market a few years back, and now they bought by Salesforce, and which is the largest uh, CIM software company, which provide this customer relationship software online, and then they bought Tableau recently for a big sum of money. Okay. And then, so that's the first part. So we will spend about a bit more than six weeks on Tableau because we have to cover and the more theoretical part in terms of validation as well. And in the second part, we're going to cover a software and called Vega Light. And so Vega Light is a bit different in the sense, and um, you need actually to start writing some code. And so it's a library for data validation. And it allows you to include visualizations to the in online content or say the notebooks you created, like Jupyter Notebook. Okay, and then Vega Lite is a, a strictly speaking, is a, not a language, and but a specification. It defines, say, how do you specify a violation in the sense and what information is needed to recreate a violation. <clears throat> and so, for example, if you need to create a bar chart, and you first have to specify, okay, I want to create a bar chart. And then you say, what are the x axis is, which data attributes it represents, what the y axis is, what the which data attributes y and attributes that represents. And that's the very basic information you need to create the bar chart. And you can have more kind of detailed specifications, for example, and how wide each bar should be, what color would be the bar used, and what are the labels for different axes. You can also specify these, but they are less important in terms of specifying the bar chart. The three most important things for a bar chart will be what it is a bar chart, it's not a scalar plot or line chart, and what an X and Y axis represents what data attributes these access represents. That's the most important thing. And so if you specify that, it looks something like this and in JSON format, we're gonna go into details later, but it um including exactly that. So it says, and what is the data file gonna use? And that's a CSV file. And I want to represent it as a bar chart. That's what this part for. And it says, what the axis, x, x axis represents. In this case, it says represents um, a field called date. So that's what is here. And then what the y axis represents. In this case, it says precipitation, which means amount of the rainfall. Okay. And once you have these main thing, actually the four main parts, and what are the data files, the type of chart, and then the X and Y axis, and you can have create this bar chart. And obviously it depends on the chart and the, the, what, you to, what you need to specify will be a bit different. Okay, and so back to the vehicle light itself and it have different language bindings. That means you can use the same in, and same specification in different programming languages. And then for example, Python and JavaScript and they can read exactly the same type of specification and just producing the validation. And so that means if you know how to use Vega Light and you can adapt that into and different popular programming languages, and it has binding for Python, has binding for JavaScript, and it also has binding for R as well. So it's quite, I mean, it's a useful skills across different programming languages. Okay. And 
as you can see, there's uh, not that much programming needed. Not like I say, you write a code for, like say machine learning, Python code for machine learning. It's much more complex. Here is more just specifying the data, the type of chart, and the different say axis. There's no say if loops or while or different more comp different classes, all these different things. You know, those are complex structures. So it's even it's some programming, but it's much simpler. Okay, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, and so that's just a more detailed and plan let's say week by week in terms of what we'll cover in the module in the first 12 weeks and you can see that on the module page as well so if i go to the module page and i will clap these and you can see okay that this is week one two three four five all the thing to week 12 i mean we covered the rest actually all 24 weeks are there already so we can also see it here in terms of plan what we'll cover each week. Okay, and the only thing I want to mention here is, so for the first 12 weeks, we have two courseworks, and then we will have two weeks when the coursework is due. When the coursework is due, we're not gonna have any more lectures or labs. So that will be a week, and just for you to work on the coursework. So that will be week seven, and then week 12 at the end of the first 12 weeks. Were, I mean, it will say on the module page as well, it will say, and week 12, of course, with you, there's no lectures or lab. And so do check and the module page. So for example, there's no point to come to the lectures or labs there. We will add, we will and say, allocate time to answer your questions Usually this will be the week before. So for example, week 11, we will just talk about the, the work that will be due next week. And obviously, hopefully you would have already started on there before that, but we'll use that week to answer your questions, which you probably would have. Okay, and so this is move on to now the second part of the module. Uh, which is covered, which about image analysis, which will be covered by Xiaofeng. And then, so image processing, again, it's visualizing visual data or image data. So it's a bit different. And in the first part, the type of data we mostly talk about is spreadsheet, where here the data itself is image. So Xiaofeng will do introduction, what, what is image processing? and some examples such as edge manipulation. So to do that, you first have to detect edges and in the image and then can do something about those. For example, make them more obvious, like sharpening the edges. And this were done mostly using MATLAB. So this is actually and what you see as a MATLAB. And so MATLAB itself would have a graphical user interface, but they also support, it has only its own languages which supports you to write in code to do that. So both will be covered. And the Xiao Hong will also cover a little bit about deep learning, which is one of the latest breakthrough in machine learning techniques, and which say improve the performance of many tasks, tasks by a large uh, margin compared to say what people was able to achieve in the last five, 10 years. It achieves a lot. Okay, and then the last part, uh, the last six weeks and week 12, week 19 to 12, and will be on visual analytics workflow. So what we will be covering there, obviously start, again, start with the concept of the workflow plan. And so the workflow is really and um, just the steps you need in the visual analytics. And then here we are including not just validation, but also the data pre-processing and also any machine learning or data analysis you might have used. For example, you might have to change the format of the data or do some clustering or classification. And you will do all of these in one workflow. 
can answer you do data preprocessing. You might do want to say like data summarization and distance measures. You might do some classification and regression, which you will learn more in other modules, what exactly they mean, different methods you can do. Whereas here you can do that in the tools. We will not say cover exactly what classification or regression is. And these are other type of analysis you can potentially do, which is clustering, outlier detection, and association rules. And so this will be kind of tools we will use. Again, it will be mostly and so graphical user interface based or GUI based. And you have these blocks. Each block represents one step in the workflow. And each block or each step can be, say, loading data, changing data format, or this could be, say, a classification or regression step. And you can, for example, load data, uh, do some data format change, and then load data into, a, say, a classifier. And this is output of the classifier. Maybe you want to visualize that as well. OK, so we're going to cover uh, how to use these tools and how to create and all the steps you need in visual data analysis. Actually, integrating the more analytical analysis, like the classification or clustering, with and the visualization together. OK, and so that's everything. And we're covering the module three parts. And we start with visualization and then image analysis, and finally, um, visual analytics. Okay, and in terms of assessment, the module will be assessed by the coursework only, so that means no exams. And you need to get overall 40% to pass the module. And so there are in total four coursework. And if you get overall more than 40%, so obviously the, the, the maximum you can get is 100%. And, but you only need 40% in overall to pass the module. And this is not required to pass each coursework to pass the module. So for example, if you didn't do well in the first coursework, for example, you get less than 40% in the first coursework, that's completely fine. It doesn't, it's not the end of the day. You can still do well in the second, third, and fourth coursework. And you might even get a first, which is distinction by doing very well in the three of the four coursework. OK, as I mentioned, there will be four pieces of coursework. And the first one is about Tableau, which we see the first part. Uh, the second one is about Vega Light, which is this validation specification. You will need to write some code. And the third one is about edge detection and deep learning. So that's image analysis we just saw. And the last one is about the visual analytics workflows. You're given some task and you need to create the workflow to complete that. Okay, and so these are the more kind of practical things and which actually is very important in the last couple of years just because of COVID. And so there will be, and that always will happen, not to you personally, but over in the class overall, that always happens. So some people might need extend, extension. For example, they might become ill. For example, catch COVID or need to go to hospitals for surgery, or sometimes just family emergencies or someone, for example, unfortunately passed away in their family. They might need to go back to their home country, etc. And in those cases, and you should apply for extension. And all the extension needs to be done using the extenu. 18 circumstance services. So there's a form, online form, you can fill out. And so that's a link there. So that's the extended circumstances form. Uh, the information on the university website, there will be a link. So this is where you uh, submit the form. You need to fill out some information to say um, which module you want to apply for, Oops, it doesn't work for me, maybe because I'm not a student. And you need to provide information, say, OK, which module you want to apply extension for, for which coursework, how long the extension you will need, what are the reasons um, for your extension, and how uh, maybe some we ask for some evidence as well. OK, 
And so there's no need to come to me for all the extensions and you go through using the extend your circumstances form. And actually, I will not receive any information you submitted on the form. So because this is private, because if it's your house conditions or your family emergencies, I, as a module leader, not supposed to know. I mean, you can tell me if you are happy, but I'm not really supposed to know. So the people processing these forms will know and they will keep it confidential. That's why you use separate forms, not go through me. And if you have any questions, you can ask me. And also you can always contact UniHelp and they probably have more experience using this. And because, as I said, I personally do not involve in the processing of these requests. So I don't know exactly how it works. And all I really can do is just point you to two and this form, which has all the information I'm aware of. Okay, so don't need to contact, contact me. Okay, and but if you do not have a valid reason, for example, you just say mismanagement or you just leave the work too late so you couldn't finish the other time or you will just completely forget about the coursework and then you will be have a late penalty. Okay, so just depends on how long you are late and it's 5% for each day after the deadline. So if you're one day after, it's 5%, two days after, it's 10, three days, it's 15 and so on. And if you're 20 days after, it's 100%, then probably there's not much point to, to submit any work anyway. Okay, and then I want to just to say, and it's the 5% of the final mark, not 5% of the total module mark. So I gave you an example here. Let's say you received third three, uh, three zero, 30 for your coursework. Let's say it's maybe the coursework was 40% and you get 30 out of 40 for that particular coursework. But you submit it late, there will be some late penalty. Okay, and in this case, and um, it's not, if you're two days late, you are not taking away 10% or 10 out of 30. What you really do is you have the 30 times 5%, sorry, one minus 5% times two. So that's 5% for each day, and you have two days. That means you have a 10% penalty. So that means 30 times 90%, which is what I get here, which give you 27. Okay. And so the main thing here, the particularly the way I designed this is say, for example, if you just need one or two days extra to finish the work a little bit, you don't really need to contact me ask or ask for or apply for extension because if you are only two days late, even if it's 10%, you're only losing three marks out of the total mark if you got 30. So, and if you're one day late, it's even less, it's one and a half marks. There's very minimum, there's not too much difference. So in those cases, it's probably better to spend another day or two just to finish the whole the, all the work, because otherwise you might only just finish half of the work, which means you're gonna lose 50% of the mark, but with one or two more days, usually we over the weekend, you can do much more and the actual penalty is not that minimal and not that much. And it only becomes more substantial when you say a week or two weeks late and then it becomes much more substantial. Okay, and now I'm gonna to go to a little bit more details about each the coursework. And obviously we're gonna talk more and during the term or during the year, before each more each before they do, we're going to spend more time talking about each of those. But now I'll just cover them to give you some idea what they are. Um, so the first coursework and the total amount is 25%. And so already mentioned that there are four courseworks, so each is 25%. That's quite simple. And the first coursework due week seven, uh, we're going to analyze some public health data which you might be able to see on the module already page. So if you go to module page and the assessment feedback, 
Ah, okay, so if you go here, and you'll just see, okay, that's the data set there. You can already see it's already there. And okay. And if you go there and see these things, for example, that have the deadlines and just ignore them for now. And uh, these are the deadlines set for the last years. And so you can see they're still set as October 30th, 2020. These will be updated very soon. I haven't got a run to update that. So it'll be set for this year. Okay, and so this is what does the data set look like? And you have the countries. These are the, like the acronym or the shorthand for the country. And you have the men and year. And it's the prevalent prevalence of raised blood pressure. So that's the percentage of the population have high blood pressure. And it shows you. And you'd have the same for two other measurements. One is a BMI, body mass index. And then one for diabetes, the percentage of population has diabetes. And your job is to use Tableau to create a validation to analyze this data. And it might look different. So this might be some of the validations people created. So I think here, the, uh, the one of them is raised the blood pressure. The other one is diabetes. And you can see how they change over time and over different age groups. Okay. Okay, and then, and so this may be something quite interesting is say, for the first two courseworks, and as I mentioned, there'll be some group work and these will be marked, but they only account for a very small, a, a small percent of the total mark. So for the first coursework, you will have a group presentation, which accounts for 5%. This is mostly just give you a practice of doing uh, data analysis in Tableau. So you will be using a different data set. And you need to discuss the what and why. So you need to discuss the task and the data and why you designed for those, how you designed for those data and tasks. And this all depends on what you find from the data. You need to find some patterns and some findings are more interesting than the others. And finally, the how good is your design? And also, and if you use any advanced features, for example, interactive and filtering or dashboard and story, these will give you extra marks. Again, the details are already in the module handbook and there's more detailed explanations in the module handbook. If you're interested, you can have a look, but also um, we'll discuss that in the lectures as well. So you go to module handbook, and uh, you should yeah have the assessment and they will say this is coursework one it give you a bit more details about what these things are and also what the marking scheme is yeah. so if you need, you can have a look, but uh, if you don't have a look now, you don't need to worry. We're going to cover these later in the lecture as well. Okay, and the second part, uh, again, 20 or second coursework, 5% interactive validation. And as we said, this is going to be using the Vega Lite, the second part will be due in week 12 which is the end of the first half. And this will be the data set we will use. Uh, I'll give you a quick look now, if you just go there. So everything is available now, but I'm not really say asking you to have a look already and because we're gonna cover all of them later. And if you really can, you can, you can have a look. So there's some data, some background information about the data analysis tasks, and you can download the data there. You have to enter some information there, but on the module page, um, if you go to this one here, and it would have the data set prepared for you there as well. So you can also download there and the same for the description. And again, similarly in the module handbook, it will give you some more detailed break information about what the coursework is about as well, or being there. Okay, 
And uh, so the actual task will be using Vega Light, not Tableau anymore, and uh, to create validations and answers, analysis, questions. And the data set itself is actually not very complex either. And just to say much bigger, oh, it's, yeah, it's a bit bigger compared to the first coursework, which is actually not small either. And so what it collects or it re records is the, the sensor readings. And so this is just the ID of the records. It says what exactly value being measured, the location that's being measured, the time that's being measured, and then finally, what is being measured, for example, that says water temperature. That says just at this location, at this time, the water temperature value is two. So it's fairly cold. That's the January of 1998. So that's winter time. So the water is fairly cold. And they have many different measures. That's all. Okay. And then in terms of actual questions, you are required to describe any trends or anomalies in these readings, because yeah, it measures many different things, water temperature and different type of chemicals you have in the water. And there's lots of them. So you need to um, discover trends or anomalies. And then you also want to describe any quality issues with the data itself. So this is different from anomalies. Anomalies is something like, Okay, for example, the water temperature in winter is 50 degrees. So that's very unnormal and uh, abnormal. So because common knowledge is said, and the temperature on Earth usually is not that high, and the winter usually should be and um, cold, <clears throat> and the water temperature should be low. But somehow it says the water temperature is 50 degrees, so that's abnormal. Whereas, say, data quality issues, something like for example there's missing measurement for the water temperature there's a period there's no measurement of no values for water temperature at all so that's more like maybe the sensor is not working properly so that's kind of things in terms of data quality or uncertainty issue okay i need to create a visualization using vega light and so this is the more complex ones or more advanced ones people created. You can actually do this in Vega Light, but I not say everyone needs to do something like this and to pass that coursework. If you can create something like this, you probably get the first or even full mark for this part. Maybe just use this as your inspiration. Okay, and marking scheme. So we all, again, first have a group work, uh, a simpler task, a simpler but similar task, and to using Vega Light to create some validation that will be done in groups and presented in the lab. And then for the actual individual work, which is the remaining 20%, and the marking criteria is similar. So in terms of the quality of the findings, what you found from the coursework, uh, from, the, from your validation, and how effective the design is. You need to discuss how do you apply the things we covered in the lecture to your visual design. And finally, the quality of the code. You need to write some uh, code to create a validation. And how good those are? Do you use any advanced features in Vega Light, etc.? Okay, and uh, the third coursework again is 25% is on image analysis, which is covered in that part. So the deadline will be on the 18th. Uh, there are two options. The first option is you can write an essay on deep learning in data validation. So how deep learning is used in data validation. And for this one, you don't really do much coding. You just write, read lots of, read quite a few papers. And the right report, uh, there'll be some marking criteria. Again, they'll be in the module handbook as well. So this is almost a kind of literature review or research type of assignment. You read papers and then write up a report. And the second one um, is actually doing some image analysis in MATLAB. And in this particular thing you do and facial edge detection and segmentation. So first you need to detect the edges 
in the picture. So you see, okay, so you're not going to using this, rather than you're going to using photos, your own face, and you do edge detections from the photos. So again, so this is just to give you some idea, Shahun will cover much more at that part of the module. So you can detect these are the edges. If this is a photo, it's different methods to this, and you get different results. And then segment your face. So then you can use this line to partition the entire image into different parts. As a segmentation, again, there's different way to do this. And each method has its own, say, pros and cons. And then you need to and follow the particular requirements to pick the right algorithms. Uh, and then you probably need to do this using a few different approaches and then compare the results. That would be quite interesting. Um, so this is a bit more detailed uh, marking criteria. So that says what you, what you need to do to get the pass, which is not difficult. And if you want to get 60%, which is a merit, which is a 2-1, you need to do all this plus these three. And finally, if you want to do distinction, you have to do a few more things. Yeah. So Xia Hong will explain this and during that part of the module. Okay, and then now we come to the last coursework, and which is a visual analytics workflow. We already roughly explained <clears throat> what is covered in that part of the module. And so it's due the end of the term, uh, week 24, that's the last week of the term. And yeah, uh, so, and just be a bit more prepared in the sense, unfortunately, and some of these more, uh, you would be doing four modules and some of them will have very similar or identical deadlines. So for example, almost all the modules will have something due at the end of the entire year. That's a bit unfortunate, but that's the case because at the end of the entire teaching year, you need to do some assessment. And uh, so you might have a course of all four modules have course of due at that time. So you really need to plan that ahead. Say you have to decide which coursework I want to finish a bit earlier. Don't leave, say, the all four modules coursework onto the last week. You definitely will not be able to manage that. And this is not just the end of the term, it all happens at the same end of the first term, the 12 weeks as well. Most likely many of the modules, some of the modules would have something due there that time. <clears throat> okay, and uh, in terms of the format of the coursework will be similar and you'll be given a data set and you need to analyze that. But in this case, we're using design and visual analytics workflow which including different steps of the analysis process and create some results. And that's including both the validation results and also data analysis results. Okay. <clears throat> A screenshot of your workflow and then some description to justify a design. So it's say why you designed the workflow this way, why that helps you to analyze or find answers from the data. Okay, and um, so in terms of marking scheme, and so this is, there's marks for data, pr data pr processing. So in this including, say, loading the data, changing the data format, cleaning data, et cetera. And so the data mining and is related to the machine learning part, maybe. And then visualization, in terms of visualization you produce to show the data. And also you need to justify your okay so first you need to explain what you want to achieve because we don't give you a fixed task you can decide what is your research questions you want to find out from the data set and through the analysis and then discuss and how the how the particular workflow is designed help you to achieve this again using the things we covered the series covered in the module 
And finally, and what are the exact things you find from the module? Oh, sorry, from the analysis. So you apply your, say, machine learning, say, data mining techniques and visualization techniques. You find something. What are they? <laughs> so the one additional mark will be rewarded to report as a good presentation. So this is how well you write and format your present your data. Uh, the, sorry, the results, the workflow and the results. That's one mark. Okay, I think we're coming end to the overview now and communication. So if you have any questions specific to a lecture or lab, for example, we talk about an overview about module today. And the, the best thing is talk to me straight after. Uh, so for example, now, if you have any questions about module or about what I talked about module today, ask me right now is probably the fast or most effective way. And also you can email them. Uh, the, <clears throat> the email address will be in the module handbook. And again, let's have a look at the handbook. So you can see that's me. And uh, that's my email just there, that's Xiaohong. Uh, that's her email address there. And this is for Dubai campus, which you don't have to worry about. Okay. And uh, so contact module leader if you're still not happy. Um, so I guess this is only if I am, or if I am the lecturer tutor, then this does not really apply. For example, but if you talk to Xiao Hong, you're not about not have happy about her marking of your coursework. You had some discussions, but you are still not happy and you can then talk to me. Okay. And then anything not specific to the content we cover in the module. And for example, you want to changing labs, which does not apply here, we only has one lab and you should contact a uh, module leader, but this does not really apply here, <clears throat> but for any other things, <clears throat> and if you want to contact me, obviously talk to me during the lecture lab will be the fastest I can give you response straight away. And uh, if it's not the meeting time, for example, we have everything on Tuesday, lecture lab. If you have some questions on Thursday, you can't wait till next week's lecture lab, you can email me. I'm usually quite good at replying, um, probably within a day or two. Okay, and please, if you're going to email me, you need to make it clear which module that is about, because I'm teaching more than one modules. I don't really recognize the student name, just they can tell which modules they are from. So if you tell me, okay, this is for CST 4060, then I know which module that is about, which will help me. Otherwise, I'll to reply, have to reply back to you to say, can you tell me which module this is? And then you have to come back to me. So if you can just mention the module, and sometimes it's even better if you tell, tell me who you are, your name and student number, and that can be more specific in, your, in my reply. Okay. <clears throat> it's also possible to book a meeting, and but that well, usually takes much longer time. Um, I will try to say arrange your time in the same week, but I cannot guarantee that. So sometimes you might have to wait till next week. If, there's something you have to discuss in the meeting. And also for the meeting, uh, it will probably be an online meeting. So we use Zoom or Microsoft Teams. And so we only do in-person meetings when it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, because just mostly because of the COVID situation. Okay, and also um, check your university emails regularly. And what I will do is actually, so if there's any announcement, what I will use is the, I think there's the functions in my learning, which allows me to send a message to all the students in the module. Uh, so that, sh so you should get a message when you log into, I should get a notification if there's such a message when you log into the My Learning, and that should also goes to your university email address as well. 
So do check them regularly. And because uh, that's pretty much the only way, if there's urgent message, I can send you. For example, and if I'm sick today, so I cannot come to the lectures in the labs, I don't really have any other way to tell you, but just to send you a message this way. So do check. Okay, yeah. So this is, and sometimes there's some announcement, for example, as a data set for the coursework is now available, or the recording for the lecture is available. And I just, and also I will send these kind of announcement using the emails. Oh, sometimes I might send some individual message this way as well. Um, just So just keep checking your email. For example, if I notice you haven't submitted your and last three coursework, so I might send an email just to check how you are going, any problems. Okay, and that's everything I want to cover today. And uh, so, so there'll be a bit reading, which is just mainly to read the module handbook. And I already showed you there. I'll just maybe go back to that now quickly again. So if you go to the module, page, which is a CST 4060, Visual Data Analysis. And okay, you should all see this, which is a Zoom link for the lecture labs, everything for this module. And also actually not just for week one to 12, if I teaching the last six weeks, and it will use the same, same link as well. But, and this link will be different for the part that Xiaofeng teaches and she will use her own and Zoom link. And this particular link is and specific for my Zoom account, which is different from, so everyone has a different Zoom account and a different link associated with that. And that's the module handbook. And this is what it looks like overall. And I think I covered almost everything already in there, in the overview. Uh, there's a bit more information, for example, what you're supposed to learn at a high level. I think this feature is useful. And if you click this one on the side and then click this one, this one, not particularly, is this one, which gives you the outline of the module handbook. You jumped into different sections quite quickly. Okay, um, I think that's everything. I'm going to stop the recording now. Uh, how to, okay, yeah, no, 